So what is the initial state at birth? A face perception, okay? You just saw a little glimmer of a, of a baby monkey, but let's first survey what are some of the face perception abilities um, from uh, lectures a couple weeks ago that we might want to look at. Well, one, we want to know about the ability to detect a face, to discriminate a face from a non-face. That's the most basic thing. Two, we might be interested in preferential attention to faces compared to other things. According to one of those views I put forth, that might be really key in wiring up a face system. Three, we want to know um, when and, and whether um, newborns can dis dis discriminate one face from another. We want to know whether they can do that even across changes in viewpoint. Remember, we talked a bunch about how that is a central challenge in object recognition, especially in face recognition, to recognize that it's the fame, same face across viewpoint changes. Uh, and then we brought up uh, a few weeks ago all this other uh, particular um, signatures of face processing in adults, uh, like the inversion effect. Um, and like the um, composite effect, remember this business here, that people like to process faces as holes so that if you ask them to identify just the top of the face, they're worse at that when it's aligned than misaligned because their face system wants to process the whole. And that was more true for faces than non-faces. And it was only true for upright faces, not inverted faces. Okay, so that's one of the kind of hallmark signatures of face processing that we could look for. Okay, all right. So which of these things are present at birth? Well, let's take these first two. Well, it turns out that little video of the newborn monkey uh, is pretty much what you see in human newborns as well, okay? And so um, early work by Mark Johnson and others, again, I don't care if you remember that, I just feel I need to give him credit for this very important discovery. Um, so he and his colleagues um, tested infants like this. The infant is lying on a parent's lap. There's a video camera overhead and he's got a big thing, round thing on cardboard that he's moving over the infant's head like this um, with various patterns on it, including a schematic face and other things. And the question is, how far will the infant track that thing? Okay, so this is like a more organized, controlled version of that little baby monkey video that you saw before, okay? So what Johnson finds is if the pattern on that piece of cardboard is a schematic face, um, then infants turn their head farther in tracking it, and they move their eyes farther in tracking it. That's what both of these measures are, eye tracking, head tracking. If it's a face, then if it's blank, way more. But even more if it's a face than if it's a scrambled face with all the same parts but moved around. Okay? This is true within an hour of birth. Yes, they hang out and run these experiments in hospitals and have to prearrange and then they run in. I know you just gave birth and you're exhausted and you're having this magical moment, but can I please do an experiment on your infant for a few minutes? Some amazing moms are willing to, you know, let the, let the psychologist run in and do their little five minute experiment doing this, yeah? Okay, so what do these data tell us? What do these data tell us here? What does this finding tell us? That the infants track head motion and I, I'm sorry, they track with their head motion and their eye motion, they track this pattern more than that pattern or that pattern. Yes, absolutely. So at five, this is the, sometimes they do this as early as five to 10 minutes after the kid pops out, but certainly within an hour, they are discriminating a basic face shape from a basic non-face shape, at least this versus that. Okay, looks like something's in eight, doesn't it? You could still quibble and say, okay, they had a half an hour and they probably gazed at their mom first and there's a whole rigmarole there and Mark Johnson has a counter argument for that and I forget exactly how it goes. But anyway, very early, okay? Um, however, uh, and, and this oddly, this response is only present in the first two months of life and then goes away, uh, but that may be enough to bootstrap the whole learning process. Remember, on this kind of extreme empiricist view, maybe all you need to do is get the hit kid to put the face on their retina and then learning systems will take it from there. That may be sufficient, okay? So it's further the case that this tracking, there are many, many subsequent experiments that have followed this, and that tracking may not require a very precise face template. You can already see this is pretty rudimentary, but in further experiments, people have shown that infants will track this more than that. <laughs> and so the idea is 
that template, whatever it is that you have to build in innately, might be really rudimentary. It might be just shape with more stuff on the top than the bottom. Okay? But that's okay. If in the infant's environment, shape with more stuff on the top than the bottom is sufficient to pick out a face, given their visual experience, then that's great. And that will work in the same way. Everybody get that? But it does mean that what's built in innately might be actually quite rudimentary. It's going to serve the same purpose, but it might be very, very rudimentary. All right. Okay. All right. So arguably, these two things are present within a day or two, maybe an hour.